This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another sculpting video. My last sculpting video of 2020, but not my last video. Today I will be making the Ghost of Christmas Future from the story A Christmas Carol. Now this is my last sculpture of 2020, but not my last video of 2020. That's coming out next week on Wednesday, the 23rd, and it is going to be my year in review video where I go through every single sculpture that I made in 2020. Now for today's video, The Ghost of Christmas Future is a character from the novella by Charles Dickens called A Christmas Carol. It recounts the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, an elderly miser who is visited by the ghost of his former business partner, Jacob Marley, and the spirits of Christmas past, present, and yet to come. After their visits, Scrooge is transformed into a kinder, gentler man. That's the story in a nutshell. Now, if you want more content from me outside of YouTube, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Ace of Clay, and I would love to see you there. Now let's get started. All right, for the first step, I drilled a hole into this wooden plaque and then inserted a wooden skewer, and now I'm going to make the shoulders for the ghost out of some 12 gauge aluminum wire by wrapping it around that skewer like so, and then we're going to attach the arms as a separate piece with some more smaller gauge wire. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Now before I start bulking out the torso, I want to create the rim for the hood that he's going to have, so we're just going to twist together this piece of wire and attach it to our main armature. And now it's time to start bulking everything out. To do this, I'm using Super Sculpey Ultralight. I don't need to use any aluminum foil because this is a smaller sculpture than I usually make. And on top of that, ultralight, you can actually use it in larger pieces without worrying about it cracking in the oven. Now because I want to create this little mini diorama at the bottom here, I'm going to extend the base a little bit. First I'm going to apply my bacon bond so there's a nice secure bond between this and the ultralight, and then I'm going to shape out the rest of the base like this. All right, now once everything is all shaped out and ready to go, it's time to bake this. And once it's baked and completely cooled down, we're ready to start covering everything in clay. For this project, I will be using Super Sculpey Original. To get these nice even sheets, I rolled it through my pasta maker on the thickest setting. And I just want to work to get a nice, thin, even layer of clay over the entire surface so that I can start my details. Alright, now since this guy is going to be a cloaked sort of phantom character, it's time to create the robes. And to create the folds and wrinkles on the robes, I'm using these nice snakes of clay, applying them to the surface and then blending the edges in with the rest of the sculpture. And I'm just going to keep applying these folds and wrinkles until I get this guy to a point that I like. And as I'm creating these, I'm not just randomly placing these snakes of clay, I am taking into account gravity, and I want these to look like they make sense. If you're having trouble creating fabric like this that looks like it's flowing correctly, you can always just grab a sheet and throw it over a chair and use that as reference.
Alright, now that the body is looking pretty good, it's time to start that hood. This was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I just cut out this triangle shape from my sheet of clay there, and then I start wrapping the ends of it around that base wire, and then I just shape out the rest of it as I see fit. It really wasn't that hard, and I actually expected it to be way more complicated than it was. And the sheet of clay that I'm using to make the hood was made through my pasta maker on the thickest setting, and because of this it's pretty self-supporting, I didn't have to worry about it collapsing or anything like that. Now I'm just going to take some tiny snakes of clay and create some little folds and wrinkles on the top of that hood there, putting my finger behind and inside the hood to make sure I don't smash everything. Oh, and here's a fancy close-up for you. Alright, now I just want to separate the cloak from the snowy base using my spoon tool. Just kind of creating indents in there. And then we're going to move on to the tombstone. Leave it to me to find an excuse to make a phantom in a tombstone for a Christmas sculpture. Alright, we're going to create this tombstone by folding this flat sheet of clay in half like so. Cutting out the shape of our stone with my nice blade from my Sculpey Ultimate Sculpting Starter Set. And then we are going to brush some bacon bond on it really quick to create a nice little three-dimensional border, but not before we texture it with this piece of aluminum foil. And then this is actually going to sort of be a scene from the story. Um, the tombstone's going to say Ebenezer Scrooge. This is what the Ghost of the Future shows Scrooge and kind of freaks him out and makes him have a change of heart in the end. So make it a little more interesting instead of just making this phantom guy. Let's create a little scene. Now it's time to write the name on the stone. Just want to outline what I'm going to do first and then start pressing it in permanently with my etch and pearl set from Sculpey. Now I'm just going to remove the clay from where I want to apply the tombstone, add some bacon bond, press it on, and I got really lucky with this thing I'm not falling over in the oven, just saying. Um, some days are better than others, but this was, it supported itself fairly well. Now I'm just adding some more clay at the base there, touching some things up with my spoon tool. And now it's time to texture the snow with a toothbrush. And I just want to texture his robes by rolling the textured edge of my sculpting tool on the surface of them. It creates a nice, quick fabric texture. And now I'm going to go ahead and pre-bake him so when I make the arms I don't smash everything I just did. Now first here I want to add a little bit of snow to the top of the tombstone with some bacon bond. Then we're going to texture that too. And now for the arms and sleeves. This is basically just going to be a tapered snake of clay that I attach to the armature wire. And 
at hand too. I do some quick wrinkles later on, but I'm going to keep these relatively simple because I will be adding some hardened fabric to this guy that will cover most of the sleeves so I don't have to worry about putting too much detail into them. And to create some really quick wrinkles in this guy, I'm just using my little just a bamboo skewer on the pointed end of it. And I'm just rocking it back and forth wherever I want wrinkles to be. And now it's time for the hands. I make these out of cos clay so I don't have to reinforce them with armature wire. And I'm just going to make them long and skinny and bony and creepy looking. As an added detail, I'm going to add these little balls of clay to the knuckles and joints of the fingers just to make them look a little more detailed and bonier. After finishing up the hand, we're just going to attach it to the armature wire with a little bit of bacon bond. And look at that, he's going to be pointing at the tombstone just like the story. After making the other hand off camera, we're going to go ahead and attach that and then smooth things out a little bit on the shoulders with some bacon bond and clay softener and then get him ready for his final bake. And then once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time for paint. All the paints that I use in this video are folk art brand matte acrylics. We're going to start with that snowy base using some titanium white. Now for the robes, we're going to use pure black. And don't forget to dry your coats of paint. You can always use a blow dryer to speed up the process. And once that first coat of black is completely dry, I'm going to go in and dry brush some light gray or darkish light gray that's lighter than the black onto the surface to bring out the details. And focusing on the high points of the sculpture, I'm going to dry brush some even lighter gray onto those just to give it some more dimension. And then for the tombstone, I'm going to start with this nice dark gray color, making sure to get it into all of the crevices. And then we are going to bring out all the detail on this once it's dry by adding some lighter gray and then going a little lighter after that. Then for his hands, we're going to go with this nice gray tone. A lot of grays in this piece. <laughs> and 
then we can't forget this little piece of snow here. And I also shade all of the snow around the edges with some very light gray. Now for the fun part. I will be using Mod Podge Hard Coat to harden this creepy cloth that I have and I'm going to apply it to the sculpture. Just stirring it in my disposable cup here with a little bit of water. I'm gonna wring it out and then apply it to the piece as needed. And I just wanna make sure I don't overdo this and I strategically place pretty much every strand. <laughs> And he's done! The Ghost of Christmas Future, or the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, is complete. Let me know what you think of this guy in the comments. And that's a wrap! I really hope you like how my Ghost of Christmas Future came out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I think it's pretty good. It's a rather simple sculpture, but I really like the addition of the little base here. And then I'm glad I used cosplay for the fingers because they, don't, they won't break. And then, of course, I love doing that little technique with the fabric. So, like I said, let me know what you think in the comments. And then before we close out, let's talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you're just getting started or you're an established brand, the Squarespace commerce platform supports the way you do business. Whether you're looking to sell products directly or even build for services, they've got you covered. For me personally, I love Squarespace for their portfolios and their galleries. The portfolios are so professional and so beautifully designed, I know that it's going to show my work in its best light. And I love the customized galleries that I can even password protect if I want to for clients. And one of my favorite features of Squarespace is the ability to seamlessly sync all of my social media content onto my homepage or really any page of my website. So if all of this sounds good to you, head on over to squarespace.com, start that free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash aceofclay to save 10% on your first website or domain. Thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe subscribe and then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay. I'm also on TikTok, so check me out there and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.